Hello, everybody in the Quest world for afternoon pre-show before the pre-show podcast. So here we go. Hope everybody had a good day so far. It's Oak Island Tuesday. At 4 p.m. we have a podcast. At about 6.30 or 7, we have our pre-show. At 9 p.m. Eastern time, we have the show itself. And then, if I'm still awake, at 10.15, we'll have a post-show on Discord or if I have any voice left. So I got to give you guys some FaceTime here. Here we go. As they come in. Hello. I'm so ready for this. Hello, John and Corey. Hey, how do you know Corian's on? Thank you, Sydney. Joanne, Annette, Australia in the house, Ashley in the house, Caroline in the house, the hook is in the house, and they're piling in. Very, very good. Yep, BC, thank you for coming in. And she says, oh, I'm hoping. Very, very good. And like I said, uh, when I'm on uh, the pre-show between 6.30 and 7, I'll also recognize all my supporters. But right now, in a grand scheme of things, I uh, say to all you guys, thank you for all your support. <clears throat> and uh, I'll mention all the names after on our pre-show. When we have guests on, um, I don't mention all the names like I usually do just on the pre-show and tomorrow with Judy at 645 with her synopsis like the usual. Hello, Ray. All righty. Tonight's show is going to be called uh, getting the shaft, obviously, it'll be going inside the garden shaft. Hello, Scott. Uh, next week on the 15th episode will be Would You Believe? And on the 16th, episode 16, here we go. It's called Striking Gold. Lordy 40, we'll see what's happening. Unbelievable. All righty. Hello, Professor. Glad to see you. All right. Well, without a further ado here, we have Courtney Wall. You know him. You see him. He's an Oak Island researcher. Shows us all the fine details of what's going on right up to this year. So please give a warm welcome to Corian Mall. Hey, John. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Hello, Corian. How are you? I'm great, man. Yourself? Hanging in there. Hanging in there. We'll be talking about the Liverpool carvings, you guys. The V. Is it the Templars? Is it this? Is it that? And Corian will give us all the facts and details on his slide presentation. <laughs> Hello, Jeff no M. Pleasure. Welcome, Corian. And we'll be taking questions as we're going right along. Yeah. Like usual, there's just a little delay. By the time I see him here and click him and he sees him, we're not going to do any kind of phone connection because that's just way that's beyond me today. There's a dead pirate locked in. That's always a good sign. The pirate. Yeah, he's a member. He's a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love that name. Yeah. These names are wild. Okay, guys. Well, Janet says hello, everybody. Now, our special guest. Can anybody think of who you think I would have on as a special guest? Would anybody guess out there who would be coming on? Or no, I didn't see anything in the uh, in the group. You know, it's not Rick Lagina, it's not Jack Bailey. 
Begley. Hello, Tammy. But this woman was on season eight. I love their presentation. And of course, you know, Johnny, a survey and a civil engineer, I love maps. <laughs> she was on the podcast way back in April of 2021. She is a GIS lead at Resource Data. Please welcome my friend, and everybody's been asking about her. Say hello to Erin King. Hi, John. Hi, Corian. Great to see <laughs> hey, you. Aaron. Oh, yeah. So great to see you. <laughs> it's wonderful to see you guys again. Hi, everybody. I've been laying low, but I'm ha happy to be here and happy to hear what Corian has to say about uh, his Taiwan Oak Island this year. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. Let everybody say hello first. They're all too excited. I told you. Mm -hmm. I'm just too excited right now. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> She's still with us, guys. We messaged back and forth. But um, this will be giving me a break. So you guys see her. You can text to her. And we're good to go. Yeah, it was a surprise. I didn't know Aaron would be on. Yeah. Hi, Daniel. Nice to see you. Yep. That was my wow factor. You know how the, the show says at the end this week and they give us the tease? Well, I'm trying to learn yep. from them a little bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, it's the best real. part of the show. <laughs> yep. All righty. Any questions uh, for Corian before he gets into the Liverpool carvings or Aaron? Because we can do welcomes till now, till eight o'clock at night. <laughs> They'll be far past my bedtime. No, I know. I don't know how many people are coming in from across the pond, but I think people from Wales, but I don't know all these time zones from all these different people. I have no idea. See Charlotte's in the list. That's... Hi, Charlotte. Oh, is Charlotte there? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. There she be. Hi, Hi Charles. So there you go, oh, John. Charlie. We have the entire Oak Island Research Team France uh, online. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, did... I mean, there's so many great ladies in this uh, scene. You, know, you guys know Erin, uh, you know, Charlotte too. I mean, she's the real deal. Yep. Yep. What does the Horseville site have anything to do with Oak Island? Does that mean anything to you, Corian? It doesn't ring a bell with me. Nope. Hmm. Sorry. <laughs> That's the first question. We're off to a running start. We're off to a good start <laughs> yeah, exactly, here. Yeah, <laughs> that's why it's well, going man. real smooth. Everybody's in shock. They're seeing Aaron, and they 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 can't they can't say anything. Yeah, this Aaron, is where I'm just going to sit still, still and Aaron will be will be answering questions. Just, this is reading. supposed yeah. to be about Corian. Yeah. We're supposed to be hearing about what Corian no, saw no, and please. what Corian did. Yeah. I'm yeah, just no, sitting no, here no. quiet. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she's the um, co-host. I, I will answer Joanne's question real quick. Um, I, as you saw my alignments from the previous time on the show a couple of years back, um, I have been making some refinements where I've been able to snap some of my alignments to more tangible features um, that are uh, more known rather than constantly iterating off of hypothetical features that I've been rebuilding. Um, and the and the realignment actually has shifted what I think um, would be a money pit and tunnel alignment further east, which actually about to probably jump 20 feet. And that actually does bring it a lot closer to the garden shaft, not on the garden shaft, but much closer to it. So just to answer that question real quick. Um, yeah, I like the shift east. I'm a fan. Okay. There you go. Go east. There you go. Uh, Corian, again, the guys that presented 
that they had these markings up there in Liverpool. Um, they just contacted the show and said, hey, we got some markings and uh, on this uh, location and you guys just uh, uh, went up there or how does that work? Uh, well, we were contacted by Terry DeVoe. Uh, I know when Terry brings something up, that's always something good. You know, he's a, he's a great yeah. guy. He's very knowledgeable. He knows all about, you know, the archaeology of the region. Of the region. Um, so, uh, you know, we decided to go there and check it out. Uh, we met uh, Isaac and Nick, um, who had initially uh, contacted, uh, you know, Terry about these, uh, these carvings on their property. And, uh, mm -hmm. and we checked them out and we were pretty amazed. Mm -hmm. There's Daniel. We're getting on the rocks, I guess. <laughs> Corey, can you tell us yeah. more about the carvings in Liverpool and why they may be Templar in origin? Thank you, kind sir. Um, you know, when, when I thought of Liverpool, I, I would think of Paul McCartney and strawberry fields and, uh, yeah, yeah. uh, th there's, there's nothing like that in Liverpool, Nova Scotia. Uh, but th there is this gorgeous, uh, stone beach, uh, where these carvings are, uh, it's private property. So, you know, don't, uh, run, run out and, uh, and go try to find these, you know, these are in, in someone's backyard. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it, it was quite, uh, quite humbling and uh, a really great opportunity to be able to, uh, to look at them and eventually uh, film them um, because that's, you know, how special uh, we thought they were, they are. Um, so if you, I brought some photos, John, if you can bring those up. Okay, there we go. Can I do that? Can you do that? And I'll get to the answer, Daniel. Okay, what's going on here? Hold on, guys. Maybe I can. Oh, there we. Oh, there we are. Okay. So this is it. This is this is the you know the the beach. This is a a natural harbor mm -hmm. uh, uh, near Liverpool. Um, you know, it's a nice uh, safe space uh, just just off the ocean, uh, uh, really. Uh, where you have these these gorgeous flat rocks, um, this this big rock you see there sticking out in uh, into the water is called a wharf rock, and then there's some some huge boulders uh, uh, lying uh, on either side of it, uh, and one of those uh, has carvings, uh, the triangular carving, the triangle or uh, what you want to call it, uh, is in the face of the wharf stone. Uh, and that was the first one uh, that we looked at. Initially, you couldn't find it until I noticed I was standing right on top of it. Uh, and then once you know, <laughs> once you know where it is, it's actually uh, it's pretty amazing. It's like it's like you know this big mm -hmm. uh, has a, a certain weight to it. It's clearly chiseled. You can see the chisel marks uh, in it. Uh, it seems to have you know direction. And uh, you know, I thought it was. Uh, pretty special um, and then you know the uh, the the search starts and then you know before I say anything else um, as with any of these car as, as with any of these carvings you will never know um, uh, who really made these because you know we weren't there when they when they were made uh, none of us were there um, so you can only guess and look at you know the circumstances and you know any other parameters uh, you know that, that that could indicate what these could be uh, mm -hmm. and why they're there so you know the first thing uh, we thought of is like you know this is a, a british broad arrow because that's what it you know what it looks like um, and then when when we started to investigate uh, a little deeper uh, you know i started to uh, to doubt um, first of all, um, you know, so this is a photo of the carving. And, and the first, the, the, it sounds like a, a funny thing to say, but for first you need to make, you know, to, 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 to distinguish what shape you're actually looking at, because, you know, there's various ways uh, you can look at this. So, you know, it could be uh, straight free lines uh, with a little heel on top, 
or maybe mm -hmm. that's just where they uh, chiseled uh, a little bit too much. Uh, or, you know, this uh, horizontal line at the bottom, is that a natural feature or was that put there uh, on purpose? Uh, uh, and what does that do to the image? You know, the indentation on the left, is that uh, some, uh, you know, a bit of the rock that chipped off when they were chiseling or is that done on purpose? Uh, and, and the sad answer is you, <laughs> you don't know. Um, this is uh, sometimes washed over by the water. Uh, so there's not, not a lot of patina or something like that. So there's, there's absolutely no way you can, uh, uh, you can date this. Mm -hmm. um, what we do know from the family is that uh, in their minds, you know, this has been there forever. So their mm -hmm. parents and the parents of their parents and the parents of the parents of their parents, they all knew that this was there. Uh, so that's, you know, that puts you back, uh, you know, at least 150 to 200 years. Mm -hmm. uh, which, which, which is a nice uh, 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 start, uh, you know, if, if, you, if you start to guess what it is. Um, of course, we looked at uh, uh, British broadheads. They look something like this. Mm -hmm. uh, so here's uh, three examples, uh, two from Canada, one from Bermuda. Um, if you look at what these were used for, they, they, these were used to mark the property of the king. So, and uh, uh, no uh, relation there to Aaron King. Um, so anything that was purchased by the British Crown uh, would be stamped with the broad arrow to mark it as their property. And what I noticed, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll say this uh, straight away, this, this, this is my personal opinion. Uh, and, and today, you know, I'm still not sure what these things are, but I'll tell you what, it, what they could be. Mm -hmm. um, broad arrows, British broad arrows are usually uh, made very neatly. They're very clean, very straight arrows. You know, they're, they're, they're put there by military men who make straight lines. Uh, um, and they are usually done, you know, in an artifact, you know, a cannon, uh, uh, an ammunition store. On a, st you know, a stone marker, uh, 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 something like that. I haven't been able to find, and I'm sure someone on the internet will uh, give me a, an example in five seconds. But uh, uh, <laughs> I haven't been able to 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 <laughs> to find an example straight into the rock. Mm -hmm. Also, um, uh, somehow this thing looks looks a bit more sloppy than the other examples uh, uh, that I've seen. Um, so, and then I thought of something, uh, of something else. Now there's a really cool story, uh, about Samuel de Champlain, who meets a captain, uh, from the Basque country. Now the Basque region is uh, the region in Northern Spain, Southern, uh, Southern France. It's called Navarre. And that's, that's, that's sort of a province that lies over both the South of France and Northern Spain and Portugal. Uh, this captain, uh, I think his name was uh, Savalet, um, talked to Champlain uh, in the early 1600s. And he told the Champlain that his family had been routinely fishing uh, the waters of Nova Scotia for the last 40 years. His father and the father of his father had been there for at least 40 years. Hmm. Uh, so he, he recounted to Champlain uh, that uh, his family had been on the coast of Nova Scotia 83 times in the last 40 years. Uh, and in uh, this specific year, uh, estimates are that they, they took home 100,000 codfish uh, uh, back to Europe. Now, these Basque people had a very special way of preserving fish. So they, they would get the fish out of the water and they would dry it on the rocks before they would load it back onto their ships and take it back to Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought, you know, this is a natural harbor. If you look at the war of rock, this is an ideal place to dry your fish. Uh, and then uh, I also knew that the Basque have an insignia. They have a logo, which is the goose paw. And the goose paw looks something like this. Mm. Um, and then there's, 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 there's more to the story because the Basque people started using this, this logo um, because they, they uh, had a very special place in Spanish history. 
in the early days, and then we're talking, med you know, medieval times, uh, the Basque, um, um, they, they were a cursed people. They were, uh, I think they started out as a leper colony, and then they, they, they grew to be, you know, quite an isolated people uh, in the south of France and northern Spain. They called them the Cargo, um, and they're still called that today. Now, there's a, a beautiful legend uh, about these people. Um, apparently, one of them, called uh, uh, Jochum, uh, uh, was a mason for the Temple of Solomon. And while he was carving one of the pillars, uh, he looked at the Jewish woman uh, and he made an error in the, uh, uh, in the pillar. Uh, he got cursed uh, by uh, um, the architect of the temple. And from that moment on, uh, all uh, of, the, of the of the Cago, all of these these people from northern Spain, southern France uh, were cursed. Now this is local legend, uh, very interesting, and it's a cool link to Solomon. You know, of course, it doesn't prove anything. Um, what is nice about it is that um, they chose the goose paw as their as their emblem, and they still they still use that today. Um, over time, they became skilled masons. So they had to develop you know, skills for themselves uh, to build an exist, uh, existence. And they started building churches and cathedrals in the south of France and northern Spain. Uh, I think the most famous example is the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela. Um, uh, but you'll find these goose you know, as far north uh, as England. Again, here are three uh, examples, two from Portugal. The middle one is uh, Santiago de Compostela. And uh, the, the one on the right is Sardinia. Uh, I think the, the left one is from Sina in, uh, in Portugal. Um, my idea was, and this is theory, you know, hypothesis. Mm -hmm. uh, so bear with me. But, you know, I, I didn't think it was unthinkable that, you know, Basque people who were fishing these waters, uh, you know, had to wait here because they fish was drying on the rocks and they carved their emblem into the rocks. Um, you know, it would sort of um, uh, match the idea we had, you know, about uh, the dating a couple of hundred years back. Um, it's, a, it's a natural uh, fishing harbor. You know, that, that is one of the one of the scenarios. Um, and then here comes the Templar link, uh, Daniel. The Basque people, the Cago, were uh, masons for the Knights Templar. So um, a number of the, uh, you know, the, the large cathedrals in Europe that all uh, were erected in the, uh, what is it, the 12th, 13th century, uh, were built by Basque uh, craftsmen. They had strong relations uh, with the Templars, they worked for them, and they would proudly etch their goose paws into the churches uh, uh, while they built them. Uh, they kept this logo and there's absolutely no way uh, you can say, you know, a Templar walked on shore and carved this into stone. But it is possible that a Basque fisherman carved this into the stone uh, uh, whose forefathers, you know, whose ancestors uh, uh, perhaps worked for the Knights Templar. And then there's the scenario that, you know, these carvings are much older than, uh, than the 1600s uh, or even uh, uh, the 1500s, I think. Um, if you follow Champlain's writings, then the Basque would have been fishing uh, off the Nova Scotia coast uh, since at least uh, 1565, uh, which is incredibly early. Um, so that's where the uh, where the Templar narrative came from. And then you know how it goes in television. We've been filming for almost a day, and they uh, 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 they cut back uh, whatever you say to to two minutes. And this is uh, the storyline they uh, they picked out. Uh, which is mm -hmm. fine because you know it, I think it's uh, it's very interesting, but that's what the link is. So summarizing, we have an a carving that, as far as I can tell, looks like a goose paw. It has the little heel. It's a little bit sloppy. It's clearly chiseled. You know, you see the little chisel marks uh, uh, in the carving. Um, it could be a British broad arrow. Uh, uh, done in a little bit of a slippy way, uh, uh, in a little bit of a sloppy way, uh, in a little bit of a strange location, namely straight into the rock face. Um, or it could be a, a Basque uh, goose ball. 
could this be MIGMA? Uh, well, we're going to talk a bit more about that when we when we get to the next set of carvings. This thing, to me, didn't look MIGMA. We definitely considered it. Uh, mm -hmm. Trust me, I've, I've been looking at symbols for a straight four months until I got square eyes and couldn't sleep anymore. <laughs> um, uh, and, uh, you will find symbols that match almost closely. Uh, at the same time, um, if you look at MIGMA petroglyphs in Nova Scotia, they're usually scratched into the rock and not chiseled this way, as far as I know. Um, so it doesn't look like Mi'kmaq modus operandi, but who am I? Uh, and, and, and then those would be, I think, the, the three prime suspects. British Broad Arrow, um, Basque Goosepaw, uh, maybe even Medieval Goosepaw, uh, or Mi'kmaq Triangle thingy, uh, not sure what it would mean. Um, and there you go. All righty. Um, I just want to put it out there that I sent Charlotte a link on PM if she wants to join us, uh, Corian. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, I sent the tour. Great. Um, and we'll see. I have a question about these uh stones and the other ones that we'll be talking about. Okay. Um, where are they located? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, I was curious about how they are to the shore during high versus low tide. Are they always above high tide okay. or do they go under? They go under. They do go under, okay. Yeah, and, and so does this one. Okay. But the, I think the, uh, the other side, we'll, we'll get to the stone. So I, I just wanted to finish this section uh, if, the, if yeah. there's no yeah, questions. Uh, th this is, you know, the, the extent to which the goose paw uh, has entered, you know, the uh, uh, the collective uh, uh, thinking uh, and, and, and art uh, in Navarre, uh, uh, even the crosses okay, uh, Daniel, the uh, with, with Christ squares. on them uh, have the uh, the shape of the goose paw. Okay, it's really ingrained go. in their culture. Sorry, yeah, go on, John. Yeah, we got a question from Robot there. Question, Corian. Does this symbol, what appears to be the number four, Within it, looks similar to the claimed Templar lead bag seal found on Oak Island. Thank you, Robert. I've not looked into that. The last time I heard it was, a, I think, an English uh, bag seal. And then all of a sudden it uh, it became a French uh, bag seal. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the expert there. Okay. BC, V for Vineland or Markland. That would date to the 14th century? Question. Just a thought, BC. Yeah, yeah why, why not? The, the, the cool thing about not ex knowing exactly uh, uh, what it is is that it can be anything. Yeah, that's the whole thing, yeah. No, on I, Oak I, Island. I like that. Yeah. Yep. On Oak Island in particular, we have the 90-foot stone. Do you believe in the 90-foot stone? We also have the HO stone. What do you think that could mean? Do we know if there's any carvings in any of the Nolan Cross boulders? Corian. Okay, great, great questions. Um, um, and I'll start with a correction. On Oak Island, we don't have the 90-foot stone. I mean, that was the whole issue. Uh, do I believe that it existed? Uh, I do. Uh, do I know what was on it? No, I don't. And I know what he does. Um, what was the second part of your question? I think um, the HO stone. <clears throat> the HO stone, yeah, it was definitely there, yeah. uh, but hard to say what was on there. Um, if you look at photos of the HO stone, you can see parts of other letters too. And I, and I think someone, you know, should should pick that up and start to uh, to analyze what that could have been. I think that could be very very interesting. Uh, I think you know the cross with the four dots, the circle with the dot. I think that's that's very uh, that's that's very intriguing. And the last part of your question. Um, is there any carvings on any of the Nolan Cross boulders? As far as yeah. I know, there isn't. And I, I've examined uh, all five of them uh, and looked at the uh, the headstone. I had, you know, on the headstone, there's this alleged carving of a Roman sword, and uh, you know, maybe shaped like like a face, like a skull. But the let's say the normal uh, Nolan Cross stones uh, don't have any uh, any carvings or scratchings. 
Yep, and the ocean levels are much lower. Yep, that's what Aaron was saying. Yep. Yeah, I don't know how much the uh, the ocean level would vary. You know, over 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 two three hundred years, I think over over eight nine hundred years, it could be just enough to uh, put them uh, out of the water. If you if you look at at uh, the, the the stone, so let me bring up a, a picture here of the, of the carvings. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they are th these carvings are sort of positioned at the bottom of a large boulder, as you could see on the show. It's, it's exactly like that, and you know I think that originally you know the the, the stone would have sit uh, would have sat you know upright for this to form a little sentence or something like that, because where they are today, they, you know, they're in a very strange position and you would have to lie down, you know, half in the water to, uh, to do your, uh, your markings. Uh, no, I don't think that's likely. So the, the, the stone was probably somewhere else flipped over. Uh, and, uh, now you need to, uh, you know, sit on your knees and, uh, uh and half in the water to, uh, to see them. They are much more wetted than, uh, uh, then what I think is a goose pole, the triangle, uh, that could have everything to do with the fact that, uh, you know, more water has, has run by these, uh, and that makes them even, you know, more difficult uh, to date. What mm -hmm. we do know is that, you know, the same as with the, uh, the triangle, uh, the family says they've, they've always been there. Uh, they look very old. Uh, I think also Terry uh, there uh, agrees uh, that, you know, this looks very, very old. Uh, how old is very very old yeah it's impossible to say could be uh, 300 years could be uh, seven eight hundred years we just don't know and we probably we probably never will um if i um uh, you've seen uh tracings of the symbols on the show um not sure i agree with everything they uh, they showed if i do it i would make something like this I think if you flip back and forth, mm -hmm. this is the best I can do. And that's also, you know, having seen these and touched these and, you know, spent uh, quite a bit of time uh, near them. I think these were the intended symbols and they absolutely baffle me. Um, so, hmm. so where does this come from and who did this? Um, and again, we have various options. Uh, and we have no idea who did this. None of us were there. Um, so what you can do is you can try to match these symbols to to you know to known other symbols and then combine them and see if you uh, if you uh, find any matches. Uh, we've tried everything. We looked at uh, 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 are they ordinary treasure symbols? You know, there's this. Uh, these famous stories about the Japanese who put treasure mm. who would tell you, you go straight here and you go, you know, around the bush and you'll find a pit and you dig 14 feet and uh, etc. cetera. Yeah. Um, looked at all of those and we couldn't really make, uh, make a match. Uh, we definitely looked at, uh, at Mi'kmaq. Uh, and I think there's a, there, 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 there's a fair chance that these are indigenous. Um, at the same time, uh, we haven't been able to, uh, you know, to, to, to match the symbols. Uh, hmm. The first one is, I think, the easiest. The Globus Cruciger is a, is a, is a known, you know, European symbol. Uh, it can mean God or in alchemy, it can mean uh, antimony or, uh, you know, there, there's various, various things this can mean. Uh, and it's fairly common. Uh, it was used by, uh, by the Mi'kmaq, uh, who presumably... Uh, were taught uh, these symbols by the likes of uh, Jacques, uh, or Pierre Maillard, uh, who came to uh, Nova Scotia in uh, was it uh, 1737, uh, and started uh, 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 writing the Mi'kmaq language out in hieroglyphs uh, uh, that were based on uh, uh, yeah, on, on on his references uh, at home, uh, I guess. Um, the other symbols are a bit of a mystery, um, especially the symbol symbol on the far right. So this, this stick with, you know, the, the two fish tails and then the circle and the cross in the middle. Yeah. I've yeah. never, I've never seen that anywhere. Never. Hmm. Uh, we've been, so if there's anyone online here 
that can tell me what this is, I'd be very, very grateful and uh, you can give me a call straight away. I've not been able to find any example anywhere of this. I mean, you know, we have symbol Bibles uh, the size of Manhattan. I've never seen this. The symbol next to that is sort of a, it's not really a half circle. It's it's a little bit you know, bent at the bottom. If you can see it better, if, uh, if I take my lines off the screen, it has a, mm-hmm. an eye. In the middle, I think someone online suggested uh, that it could be. It almost a fish. looks like uh, it's got a line coming down the bottom, too. Maybe, and it's hard to say. Yeah, it's very hard say. to make out. Mm-hmm. And it, the, the the frustrating thing is, you know, every time you change angle and you, yeah, you look you look at this from a different angle, or you change the contrast on the picture, or you you so we've been spraying water on it and uh, 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 etc. And then every time you look, it seems to have a little bit of a different shape. But this is the shape that 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 stays, right? Mm. Uh, and of course, there's wear because you know the Globus Crucifer on the left. Uh, you know, uh, of course, normally uh, the bottom uh, wouldn't be open, but I can't tell you whether that was intentional or um, you know whether that's that's been so wet that it's disappeared. You know, I mean, even mm-hmm. the uh, the circle is. Uh, is hard to to distinguish, but on the, on the rock you can see that it's it's fully chiseled out the whole circle. Uh, it's only hard to to, uh, to see the edges now. So I'm pretty much convinced that is indeed a globus uh, crucifer. Yeah, and then this uh, this second symbol, the 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 circle with the uh, with the line uh, cutting mm-hmm. it in half. Uh, that can mean uh, many things. Funnily enough, uh, uh, it's also a symbol for antimony. So if you're an alchemist, uh, you'd have two different symbols for antimony uh, on the stone here. Um, haven't seen that uh, um, in Mi'kmaq. They have something like this, but it's just a little bit different. Um, so yeah, what uh, uh, what is it? Um, Questions, questions. Yep. Any questions from, out the, there. from the viewers? Yep, they'll put it out ah, there and see if they can someone find it. Someone says Font Arcada. I think that's 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 a good question. Um, yes, we did find a Globus Crucifer in Font Arcada as a Mason's mark. Uh, we did find, um, if you look at the last mark, uh, the a line with two fish tails, uh, we found as a Mason's mark in Font Arcada, uh, but then without the circle and the cross in the middle. Uh, mm-hmm. But at least we had it half right there. Uh, but the point is, I mean, why why would people make... I, on the show, you hear me say that they look like Mason's marks, and they do. Mm-hmm. Uh, what you don't hear is that, you know, what would a Mason mark do in a rock, uh, you know, in, in Nova Scotia? Because uh, a Mason would mark the stone... Uh, so people would know how many stones he used in the wall and they could pay him for the right amount of stones, right? It was yeah. it used mark. for something, yeah. Yeah, they had a, they had a practical yeah. use. And, mm-hmm. and unless someone got really bored and, and decided to chisel something in the rock, um, you know, it wouldn't have any, any practical use. I mean, the, if you look at this, this line of symbols, it looks distinctly esoteric or... Um, uh, if it's Mi'kmaq, you know, it could be a really practical line, you know, hey guys, mm-hmm. here's the fish. Um, impossible to say. Um, but Mason's marks, you know, I think uh, unlikely. The goose paw, if it's a goose paw, that would be a Mason which changed into a logo over time and became, you know, the hallmark of uh, of the Cago, the Basque people uh, of northern Spain, uh, southern France. Um, and th- that's not something you can say about these marks. So, possibility uh, Mi'kmaq or early U- European, uh, you know, with the caveat that if they're Mi'kmaq, they're also early European because they used uh, European symbols uh, for their hieroglyphs. Um, Gretchen Cornwall uh, made, made a, a suggestion, uh, I think yesterday or today uh, in a video, uh, which, uh, which is cool and which would point at another Templar uh, reference. Don't know if you've seen this. Um, this is a representation of what is known as the Westford Knight. 
Um, this is a large rock rock slab in Massachusetts, in Westford, uh, Massachusetts, um, which has been there for ages, uh, which was investigated uh, in the 1950s. Uh, and uh, uh, people have drawn the conclusion that this is the effigy of Sir James Gunn. Uh, now, James Gunn was one of the men who allegedly came to Nova Scotia uh, with Henry Sinclair in 1397. Um, and uh, this circle dissected by a line mm -hmm. this is his buckle uh, and was part of their coat of arms. Uh, you see it here uh, twice, once on his shield, on the top right corner of his shield, and you see it on his... Uh, uh, on his dress in, in the bottom right corner. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that's the same symbol. Um, so you know, I'm not making any conclusions here, but uh, it's a, it's a, uh, that would be you know a link to uh, uh, to the Templars. Um, the Templars definitely used uh, the Globus Crucifer, but you know so did every other religious organization in Europe. Uh, at the time, you find these in every church in uh, in Europe, so it's hard to uh, to draw any conclusions. Um, we don't even know if um, if the triangle, so you know the the broad arrow or the goose paw or the mick ball triangle, uh, were carved at the same time as these. Uh, what you, it's hard to make out from the pictures, but if you look at them yourself, you can see that these are chiseled. So that again, for me, would could be an indication that they're not Mi'kmaq, because uh, Mi'kmaq people would scratch these into the rocks. If you look at, you know, the Bedford petroglyph or you know other petroglyphs, uh, I have a number of books uh, with uh, uh, Mi'kmaq petroglyphs. Uh, you see that the, the, the that almost all of these are scratched into the into the rocks, and that looks different than something which is chiseled which looks you know which has clearer lines and mm -hmm. looks more steady and intentional and of course you know there, there's the point that the Mi'kmaq you know they, they were very careful to damage their environment so something like you know the the triangle I I would not expect them to to make they would have to really scar the stone uh, to make something like that Right. Uh, Corey, and I want to bring this question up. It's off topic a little bit. Uh, came in earlier and the crew didn't see it. Um, the question from Connors about also, have you found any more of the ship's logs of Duke Dangval? Um We have seen every available known ship log. Uh, and uh, as, as, you know, especially uh, kudos to uh, to Charlotte if she's still uh, online. Uh, it's, it, it was a, a, a biblical task uh, to go through all of them. You know, they're all in uh, in, in old French. Uh, they're not so easy to read. And then you know mm -hmm. to, to sift through and to the bits of information uh, that you think you need is uh, is quite the task. Mm -hmm. um, so. Um, I don't think uh, everything is available. Uh, 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 a lot of ships uh, uh, went lost, uh, sunk to the bottom of the ocean, and uh, took their uh, their logs with them. Um, but what there is, I think uh, uh, we've seen. Okay. Daniel says, Charlotte. Yeah, Charlotte, we got to yeah. set up Charlotte with some kind of video cameras and stuff to get her on here. <laughs> Yeah, Charles, it's fantastic. Someone says we have a monument in eastern Nova Scotia about Henry Sinclair. Yes, you do. It's in uh, what's the place called? Is it? Uh, uh, I've been there uh, two years ago. I forgot the place myself. Yeah, me too. I remember seeing. I can see the statue right now, but I don't know where it is. Is it Gloucester? Something like that? Let me look it up. Let's see, Doug. Can we say, if Templars, that they chiseled as they went along? Every place they went, they chiseled stones, I guess, that Doug is saying. In other words, they had a guy putting down their markers as they were going to all these different locations. Uh... <laughs> like breadcrumbs. Yeah. 
I'm 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 not sure. I'm not sure. Mm. Uh, but if I feel they, like they would have I, to have I had guess, a real reason. They would have had a real reason if they wanted to bother putting yeah. a marker somewhere. If they planned to return yeah. there, if they if an activity was going to happen there repeatedly, I could see that. But as breadcrumbs, yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, yes or no? Okay. First of all, the, the Henry Sinclair Monument is in Guysboro. Thank you, Dave. Okay. Uh, that's where it is, uh, and it, it's uh, along the uh, the motorway uh, on the coast. It's a uh, it's a great spot and uh, uh, it's a nice a nice monument. Uh, it's worth the detour if you're there. Um, I, I I agree with Aaron that you know primarily people would uh, leave um, uh, markings uh, because they have to mean something uh, because it took effort to make them. Uh, they had to use uh, that's another point that Gretchen uh, Cornwall uh, makes. They had to use expensive tools. You know a uh, a chisel would be a, a a valued object uh, um, uh, at the time, uh, so you wouldn't just do that. Uh, but for example, to indicate, hey, this is a great place to dry your fish, if you happen mm. to be from Basque uh, country, uh, you know, uh, I think that uh, that would be thinkable. Right. And as a surveyor, um, I would say myself too that sometimes they would look like an old benchmark or something. I mean, this is where the point starts, and then it goes this way or goes that way. I'm not sure what they used in the old days, but uh, yeah. you know, like a benchmark. Here's where we start, and this is where it goes, and then there's another mark. I don't know, 200 yards to the south, northwest, or whatever. You know what I mean, Aaron? Yep. Yeah. And also from uh, an archaeological perspective, a lot of times when sites are being selected for something, they usually try to pick places that already have some type of natural advantage or would require the least amount of effort to do up to become whatever they need it to be. So yep. they probably yep. wouldn't have bothered um, putting in all this effort to put marks on these stones unless there was a real reason to do so because it costs, it takes effort, it takes mm. labor it, that they wouldn't have just yep. done just because there would have been a, a very real reason why they would put that effort and put that energy into that. Yeah. And of course, you know, I've looked at where does this point, you know, I've laid there uh, on my belly, uh, you know, with my nose uh, on the rock, uh, seeing where the arrow <laughs> pointed. It, uh, I'm going to give you all the details now. It points to the bushes. Um, <laughs> so, so, so um, and, and there was nothing direction. in there. Um, so, Cardinal direction. Yeah. Uh, so, so we uh, uh, th that's work in progress, uh, Aaron. So, uh, but no, <laughs> yep. it's no, it's no obvious place. Uh, otherwise, you would have known, or you would have seen on the show. All right, uh, you better bring your machete when you go out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get that you machete do. strapped really to your do. leg, Corey, and if you're going to be doing this. Yeah, yeah, did yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Stones. No, that's more, more like a Josh Gates uh, thing, I guess. Yeah. Sorry, I was just gonna Sorry, ask if these go stones on. get GP. No, you're fine. Did they uh, get GPS logged while you guys were out there by any chance? Not yet. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Okay. And this was 50 miles away from Oak Island, right, Corey? Something like that. Yeah, Liverpool. I think it's 60, 70 miles, maybe okay. even. Yeah. It's quite a drive. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. We think something would be a little bit closer, but who knows? Nobody has uh, discovered them yet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's crazy to find uh, markings there, you know, on an unknown uh, beach, and uh, it's uh, it's <laughs> it's another mystery. It it really is, and they it looks European, it looks old. Uh, it could be Basque. If it's Basque, you know, it's a uh, it's a very old symbol uh, that indeed uh, uh, has has links to uh, uh, to the Templar churches. Uh, at the same time, it could be uh, uh, could be done by the people who live there. I mean, in the end, you know, if you uh, if you look at at, at everything, uh, you know, what what is what is more likely? Uh, mm. It's it's hard to say. I think in the end time. I'm undecided uh, as to what they really are, but we, we should, I think we should look at, uh, at the European connection here. Yep. Then Renee, can you read that, uh, Corinne? If you looked into Rene Duke, the Duke d'Anjou, any detailed are on his tentative reign over Normandy, Jerusalem? Uh, oh. I haven't, maybe oh. Charlotte has. Okay. I can definitely forward the question. 
Alrighty. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. A lot of people were probably wondering, well, how much did you see and read over there about the ship logs? And probably it's not shown yet, but that's the uh, that's the big thing that they want to know, sort of, you know, what other ships went to Oak Island? <laughs> we'll soon find out. No, no, uh, um, not not a lot. Um, so the the interesting ships are the ships in the Vanguard. So the, those are the ships, you know, that we discussed in I think was it episode five. Yeah, and uh, with the uh, poetic name "Duck It Out." Um, so of these two ships, we know that you know the captain sent one of them away against the will. Uh, of this captain, so there, there was one commander in charge of two of the ships. So um, um, they had specific; these were king's ships, so they had direct orders from Louis the Fifteenth. Mm -hmm. uh, they went ahead of the main fleet, and when they arrived on the Nova Scotia coast, coast uh, Duvignon sent his colleague away to Newfoundland on some mission uh, to look at currents uh, and stuff like that, and. Uh, this captain uh, was was very reluctant, and you can read from his journals that he really doesn't like uh, to go away. Also, this captain wants to contact the French forces on the ground, which seemed like which seems like an incredibly logical thing to do, right? Mm -hmm. um, but Dupinot doesn't let him. He says, "No, you're you're moving, you're going now, uh, and I don't want to, uh, to see you uh, for a while." And then uh, there's big gaps in the journal. And at some stage, um, uh, you can see from the journal that they've been at least close to uh, uh, to Mahone Bay. Um, there's um, coordinates in the journal for, for St. Margaret's Bay, which is just around the corner. And uh, uh, and, and there's uh, you know these uh, these big gaps. So what we know is that two ships came. One was sent away against the will of the captain. They stayed mm -hmm. around the area for a reasonable amount of time. They had too many men on board by specific orders of the king. Mm -hmm. And and we know they went on land uh, a number of time, times. And we have no idea what they, uh, what they did. They didn't contact mm -hmm. the land forces. There you go. That's the mystery. I hear you. More questions, more mysteries. 10 years, 11 years, 12 years, 13 years. <laughs> hey, I don't run the show. I just, I just do research, mm. um, and it's a, that's that's a, 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 there's nothing sexy about research. It takes a long time, and uh, results uh, don't come every day. Yep. There you go, Daniel. Corian, did you notice any French markings for a land claim in that area? No, I didn't. Mm. I'm still waiting for the big Muyan results, uh, guys. I'm still looking for, okay, what's it going to show? Is it going to show anything? And I was told later in the season, they will show Muyan reference points or whatever they're going to say. Okay, that's all I got. No comment. No comment. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Ashley. I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Thank you. It takes a good pair of eyes and uh, 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 determination. <laughs> Thank you. Very, very good. Get them questions going, guys. They're here. So again, for, for, for people that, that log in later, if yep. the symbol that's on the, the bottom right corner of the screen, if you've ever seen this, let me know. I have no idea what it is, what it can be. The first symbol, Globus Crucicer, uh, you know, as good as certain. The second symbol could be anything. Antimony, a Mi'kmaq symbol, or maybe the belt of Sir James Gunn, who came to Nova Scotia, allegedly, uh, in 1397, in the same boat as Henry Sinclair. The third symbol, no idea. Is it a, a fish, a bird? Who can tell? Yeah. The last symbol... Uh, the basis of it is identical to one of the mission's marks we saw in Fonte Arcada in, uh, in Portugal, uh, but we haven't seen the circle and the cross on top of it. 
and then I'm, I'm going to speculate a little bit more uh, for Daniel who asked the Templar question and maybe other viewers as well. Um, in their, on their properties, particularly in France, the Templar uh, would use a circle with a cross at its heart, uh, meaning uh, uh, order of the temple. So the O for order and the cross in the middle would be T for temple. So if you combine that symbol with a mason mark for Fonte Arcada, you're there too. And I repeat, that's speculation. Corian Moll did not say he believes this is a Templar symbol. We have a smoking hedgehog here. Yep. Do you think the bottom carving looks like it's done by a different hand? Uh, hmm. I understand why you asked the question, but I don't yeah. think that. It's that's a, yep. That's a really good question, but if you... I don't, I don't think so. I think they, these were put there together. Hmm. Great, great question. I understand why you say that. Would that look like a, a, a dove in the feet standing on a branch? Take off, take off the the black. Now look at it quick. Does it look like a dove standing on a branch? Yeah, it could be I can like see a where you're getting that. Like that. You see where yeah, I'm yeah, getting that, Aaron? Too. Yeah. 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 I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> With the beak. Yeah. And on the top of the head. Yeah. 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 I can then, see. I can. I see what you're seeing. You got the wings on this coming off the neck. Yeah. And he's on a branch. I don't know. I'm gone. My brain is shut. Well, it's like looking at the clouds. I mean, the, the, I was just going to say the, the same I, thing. I, I, under, I understand why you say this. Uh, uh, I understand why you say this. Again, if you trace it, if you feel it, if you put water on it, if you uh, yeah. make photos, you do the contrasting. This is it's like what, the ink uh, blot exercise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, ink stain. Yeah. I, I thought yeah. I'd put that on there because the show's got yeah. me looking at every rock, yeah. every twig, every uh, piece of grass, every marking that you can imagine. So my brain goes all over the place. But this, I, I do, I do think these these things help, right? Look at these pictures yeah. with as many eyes as possible, and then you know, see what we can find. Um, that, that's one thing that I love about being involved in the in the Oak Island search. That there's so many fantastic people uh, uh, helping, and no one is going to solve this uh, on his or her, or her own. You know, yeah. you know we will need to uh, to work together to uh, to get to uh, satisfying answers. Yep. Could the carving yep. be upside down? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I, I still don't exactly. know what it would mean, but they, they could absolutely be uh, be upside down. Uh, uh, yeah. We don't know what how they were originally positioned, but I'm pretty sure that they weren't positioned the way they are now, with them, uh, you know, half in the water. It really looks like the boulder rolled over at some stage. Mm-hmm. Yep, who knows? Who knows? If we had all the answers, you know what I mean, Corey? Yeah, it wouldn't be here, man. Uh, and I'd very. be uh, probably, I'd be very irritating a human being if I had all the answers all the time. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Got to have them questions, Cuff. All right, I'm going to take the rocks off and bring us up. Sure. Yeah. That's and you have the to, right? So they'll be, they'll be in your. Uh, uh, in the show, in yeah, a little clip, yeah, okay, cool. And there we're back. All right, we gotta, we really went through this Liverpool carvings, guys. You gotta have some more questions, and then we'll sort of button it up, guys, and uh, go from there. What you see, maybe to give you some more background, you know, the, and, and the whole process, uh, you know, of, of finding these and looking at them, what you saw on the show, and that is something that I still feel today is, is, is excitement. I mean, this is cool. This is old. Uh, what is this doing, you know, in someone's backyard in Liverpool, uh, Nova Scotia? And don't get me wrong, you know, the, the, these are the nicest people in the world and they've been so, you know, hospitable uh, uh, and so nice to us. Um, and there, there, is a, there is a chance. If you, if you look at the datings on the island now, you know, they, they sort of start to converge around, what is it, 1200 uh, AD, you know, mm. 1180, uh, 1187 uh, um that is you know whether we like it or not that is templar territory 
Mm -hmm. uh, and then if you start to add up all the all the dots and do you know the, what Rick always says, you know, co start connecting the dots, then you're sort of forced in a certain uh, in a certain direction, and uh, and and that is definitely uh, exciting. Uh, do I believe that these are Templar? Uh, it's it's it would be absolutely breathtaking if they are, but you know the the likeliness is. Uh, is not very high so you know low chance yep. really really high impact uh and still worth uh, having a look they would be yep. just as valuable maybe even more valuable if they are Mi'kmaq uh, and they tell the story you know of a of a local people that lived there on the coast and did their fishing uh uh and i hope you know one of these days uh, uh we can find some uh, you know something that will give us a definite answer on this. Yep. And they also are sort of point and tool that we're getting from other searchers and researchers. That's a relic. It's not a chest of pirate treasure. I'm just saying, putting it out there. We're getting more people pointing towards a relic than just a, you know, chest of gold or Bacon's documents. Uh, that's the direction I see is trying to go. I don't know if it's true, but um, more people are going in that direction. Do you find that? after 10 years that the direction is going more towards if there's something there it's more of a relic or just you know i mean they're they're looking for gold in the water and everything else but what direction do you guys feel that now the show is going to after 10 years you know in 2023 now um what's your opinion on it's, that you want to go first Aaron? i uh i got my own answer on that. Um, I feel like, and I think actually it's been pretty clearly stated the way Rick talks about it too, is um, at the beginning of the treasure hunt, it was, we want to find the vault and we want to find the treasure. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that narrative has very openly and uh, transparently changed to, we want to tell the story. Yep. We want to know the history. We want to tell the story. And that has, I've, for, for better and for worse, <laughs> um, I think, because the stories are, of course, very important and, of course, um, a big part of it. Um, but I feel like sometimes the primary objective gets forgotten and the primary objective that got them passionate in the first place was, you know, the treasure stories and, and mm -hmm. trying to put an X marks the spot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then Daniel has a question uh, for you, Aaron. Who you want me to answer get... that as well? Yeah, yeah then or, I'm going to click it off. Or, miss, or redirect it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, have, I have numerous prime suspects depending on when we're talking about. Um, I, I think the Oak Island history traverses numerous centuries. I think multiple people have been here over time. And I think... I don't think I can give you a prime suspect. I I have numerous people during numerous centuries that I think had awareness and possible mm -hmm. involvement. And it and it yeah, it's, I think it's more complicated than just a single prime suspect. And that's about all I'm willing to say right now while okay. I keep piecing it together. <laughs> Great answer. Yep. Um, relic. Right, you know, I, this is my fourth season. Uh, that I'm involved and I get a little bit more involved uh, every mm -hmm. year. Um, I've told you this before. The first question I got uh, uh, from the team was, do you think there's a connection between uh, Nicola Poussin and, uh, and Oak Island? Uh, on which I said no. Mm -hmm. um, uh, four years down the line, uh, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm not so certain anymore that there's no connection. Uh, there's definitely a, a story here. There's definitely uh, a qualified uh, historical mystery here um, that has to do with uh, with medieval Europe. Um, something, if if suppose suppose something was brought to Oak Island for safekeeping, mm -hmm. it would have had to be worth the effort. People risk their lives for this, you know. Mm -hmm. um, if you so okay you know in the, in the 1550s apparently uh, uh taking a boat to north america from europe you know it wasn't a taxi ride but it was something they routinely did i can assure you that wasn't the case in the 1200s or the 1100s so mm -hmm. if people came at that time it would have been an 
a hazardous journey and it would have you know it would have had to warrant uh, 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 the result somehow so um, it, in my mind gold really doesn't fit that bill you know mm -hmm. why you bring your coins to the other side of the ocean uh, why I mean the, the last thing you would need in a foreign country at that time was money wouldn't mean anything you know it, I, I'm not sure the, the Mi'kmaq will accept your, accept your dollars you know when mm -hmm. you uh, when, when you got on the shore <laughs> they had the, they had their own currency um, so I think it's unlikely that it's uh, um, uh, if it's that old, then it's unlikely that it was just gold or, or something like that. And then it, it was something of sacred or a spiritual value. Agreed. Yep. And well, they always cool say the story. Huh? Yeah, if we can find it. But then the history too say the show <laughs> is giving us a history lesson, which I've learned more history in these 10 years that I ever did in school. Like Aaron knows and yourself, they're encouraging people to be like Aaron and to be like all the rest of the workers there who wants to be an excavator who wants to be a metal detector who wants to be yeah. like aaron who wants to be like gretchen that's fantastic but yet when they say that they wanted to straighten the story about history why do they still go with i mean this is what is brought down to them that the three guys are on the boat the three kids are on the boat saw a light went to went over there saw a depression with the act of, okay well if we're changing history why don't we try to figure, I mean, there weren't kids, there were older guys. Did they have a map from Scotland that they had an inkling of what was going on in Oak Island? And that's why they went to Oak Island. You know, the history also has to really improve that story for us. Not only the history that goes back, but the history of Oak Island story. You know what I'm trying to say? Oh, yeah. Well, there's the lore and there's the history, right? I mean, the lore yeah. is that, uh, you know, McGinnis was hunting and he uh, yeah. saw lights on the island. I think the uh, fact is that people lived on the island long before, yeah. you know, he, he ever <laughs> set foot on it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if he saw a light, it was probably, you know, someone uh, going to the toilet or, uh, you know, uh, putting the garbage out. Uh, so the, <laughs> that, that's the other perspective. Um just looking at uh, the response here from Ray, uh, the work that needed to be done had to be organized, etc. Yeah, th that's true. I mean, one of the things that Charlotte and I found out in uh, a year of researching uh, France is that, for example, the Knights Templar were excellent uh, uh, water managers. So hmm. they 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 literally drained swamps uh, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, uh, you know, they, they had the knowledge to do this. Uh, and they were very well organized. Yeah, very good point. knowledge of drainage and tunneling. And uh, there yeah. are only some key groups throughout history that know how to do that. Yeah, yeah if you look yeah. at these uh, uh, Albert Lynn uh, National Geographic uh, documentaries and you see uh, what they did with water and tunnels, it's absolutely, it's just unbelievable what they did with you know so so little means. It's just incredible. Yep, and let me see what comes to my mind here. Uh, Brian Farrell was very close to Robert Young and Fred Nolan for a lot of years. And he said on Lot 5 on Saturday that uh, Robert Young found an uncirculated old coin. Now, I'm not a coin collector or a coin expert, but that seems awful strange that you find an uncirculated coin uh you know, on the island. Who knows? I'm just putting it out there. It just came to my head. So, okay. I, I didn't see it. Didn't know that. How did he know it was uncirculated? I don't know these things. <laughs> How can you tell? You know, yeah. the metal, the metal detector. I don't know. Guy, I yeah. didn't see it. So I'm totally just. Yeah, the metal detector guy, what he found, naive. and he had it uh, analyzed and it was an uncirculated coin. Hmm. So that's all I know. And I'm just saying, well, they're finding coins. Gary's kind of finding half coins all the rest of the um, artifacts that he's finding on top. But to find an uncirculated coin, you know, not worn, pristine condition, this just had my head scratching, you know what I mean? On top of all the rest of the stuff they find with more questions, you know? Coins travel in a lot of different ways. So that's interesting. Coins travel all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. 
I do. Well, guys, I'm going to thank you for uh, coming in. I want to thank you for your expertise as usual. Um, My pleasure. And uh, please stay in the staging area for about a minute or two after I say my goodbyes. And uh, I hope you come back. Everybody wants uh, you guys to come back. Corian comes back all the time. I thank you so much, Corian. <laughs> um, Aaron. My pleasure. There she is. And I'm going to probably get more PMs. But what about her technology? What about her angles? What about, nope, when she's ready and she can say and do, she'll let us know at her time. Things are still brewing. Yep. So I thank you also, Aaron, for showing up. Aaron, and being with Aaron's me. a great cook. And, yeah, <laughs> great cook. And I thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, John. Thanks, everybody. Thanks thank for having for us, John. All right. I'll see you in a little while. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Aaron. Well, guys, that was it. Holy Muyan. Fantastic, those guys. They come on in a moment's notice and did a good show on the rocks. And uh, you can see the man himself to explain. So we'll see you on a pre-show about quarter to seven. And um, enjoy the show tonight on the History Channel. But remember, members, what do I guys tell you? Always go forward. You may get a setback, but just believe in yourself. Believe in your dreams, no matter how old you are. For tomorrow's a never given in this crazy world we live in. Needs a ton of prayers. So you be kind, you keep smiling, you stay strong, you stay positive, and you stay safe. I'll see you in about a little less than two hours. Thanks for joining me, Aaron Coring. I thank him so much. Like I said, I'll see you in less than two hours. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Thank you. Take care and...